Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about interacting with live streams. Yeah, it's kind of really great. Hey, everyone. It's Joe Glines here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Yeah, and today, as I said, we're going to be talking about interacting with live streams. So, um, a subscriber and, and a guy who also uh, I'm going to I'm going to butcher his name, Panagiotis Milas. Uh, he's in Greece. He uh, he live streams a lot. He has uh, over like 700 live streams, and he started. He found Auto Hotkey. He's learning it, and he wrote a really excellent email of, you know, laying out the stuff, talking about what he's doing. Uh, but just just to, you know, it it's amazing the difference of like my willingness to help goes into with how much effort they put into the email, other than just saying, Hey, can you can you do something for me for free? I'll I'll pay you five bucks. Anyway, so he he um had this idea of how can we use auto hotkey to in some way or another interact with our audiences? And I, I think it's a really interesting idea. Now, Jackie, you were mentioning you know, because I know you watch, you watch, I think, more general live stream stuff than I have, but or at least with Pat Flynn, right? You've seen a lot of stuff with him, right? That there's tools I, already. I've seen a few, and, and I've made some tools that were in a space where live streamers were a thing as well. And because of that, I've seen multiple popular live streamers, not because I was a follower of them, because because they were in my space. And fair enough, I've seen quite a few ways of making stuff happen on screen. And I've seen all the ways down from someone sitting there and, oh, 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 a donation came in. You know what, just a moment. And they'll be typing over here and, and then bing, a small thing on screen popped up. Uh, cat Cat donated $2. Or whatever it might be and there might even be a top three or whatever but yeah people are willing to do many things to become a part of what they like uh, in this case of a live stream getting their username or their um, some kind of acknowledgement might be a way of putting it as well um yeah on yeah it it, sorry for interrupting, but it, it, it made me laugh because one of my other subscribers you, who had written me a while ago, it maybe this whole conversation has made me realize this is still this is actually the same topic. So she's like a webcam, you know, girl. So she she's on webcam doing stuff, um, and that's where obviously you know they're doing a lot of stuff where they get pings and note and they get money and this and that, and they want to, of course mention something about them or whoever, and so. Uh, it's it's very similar that idea, right? A concept, but which I think you're getting to is the more interactive you, when you're live streaming, the more interactive that the audience is with you, the more fun people have, the more they'll stick around, the more maybe you'll make money or just have a good time, or more people show up, right? Which is the the real payouts, I think. Yeah, and and the general idea of what he was proposing was a way to let people interact even more doing live stream. Not because they were interacting directly with him necessarily, but they had, let's say, a, a screen area or something like that where they would have control or some kind of control. At least. Some way to have input, yeah, as well how I would phrase it, I think. Um, yeah. And that's where it, it gets interesting is... is Okay, let's let's start with the the not worst case, the most basic sort of simplest, which has I it does have a broad appeal of hey, people are um, interacting with the live stream chat already. So, is there some way for us to pull stuff from that chat and then you know bring it into our programs or use logic to do stuff on our on our screen and show them hey, what you did actually worked because I'm sharing my screen right and they could see that. And in that one, you know, we know there's the Chrome class, which we could automate getting that uh, fairly well. It, the, the pro, I mean, I, it's it's a shame that IE doesn't work with YouTube anymore because I would say that in a heartbeat, I would be all over that, right? It would work great for ripping that stuff from it. Uh, but I know YouTube has an API, so I'm, I'm willing to bet they have an API where you can get people's comments um, and, and automate. Instead of trying to automate Chrome to do it, I would just rather 
do API calls, uh, web HTTP requests, you know, and get that information. Yeah, or who knows, there might be an extension that puts it all in a file on your system or whatever. There might be lots of possibilities of, of ways yeah. to, to get a, a chat or transcript or whatever it might be. And there could be other ways of getting messages from, from the end user. You might offer them up a specific chat program or a specific email address. They were, there's lots of ways to, to do stuff like that. And I've seen someone having quite an, ex, an elaborate setup for their stream. Uh, so, so there are some tools out there that will let people interact to some degree. And sure enough, if you choose to turn on the chat, you will have that in, let's say, the right side of your screen. And you can chat with everybody there, or you can give your voice up, or you can send hearts or whatever you want to do. But if you actually do want to give people a specific screen area, I'm not sure you want to give them all of it, but you want to give some kind of predefined possibilities. And uh, within that, I think something like got hotkey could work really well if you just narrow down exactly what you want to have happen. It probably doesn't make as much sense to have a small message area, even though that could be a thing. But as you already have the chat, who knows, it, it might be a possibility to have some kind of message on screen for a longer period of time or whatever it might be. But it could also be a way to share images or say, I want to fire a small GIF or yeah, lots of possibilities. Yeah. And to that point, so let's say I know in his, I watched, um, I, I'll try to remember to put the link to his channel in case anyone was interested in watching it. Uh, it's his videos are mostly in Greek though. So uh, there's that. But anyway, um, he, he deals a lot with saving animals and protecting animals. Uh, and what, what occurred to me was, like for him in specific and a lot of people is uh, they might want to submit like pictures of their own pet and, and have them say, Hey, I can put my picture of my pet and it's displayed on the screen where it gets out, you know, and maybe hundreds or thousands, depending on how big your podcast is, you know, people can see this. And so that's where I was like, you know, I mean, I know we could use like imager um, to, to, to do, you know, to get a URL and then go grab it and display it. That would be a somewhat simple, but again, so let, let's circle back a little bit there, which I agree, just having a spot where people can dump text, not a huge benefit for the work you'd be doing, right? So, um, but if we can have them do other stuff like load a file or even a drawing or something, and of course, then it also becomes crazy where you may have stuff on there where, <laughs> you know, um, people are crazy, but um, it does open up the door where suddenly this could be much more interactive and fun. Right. Uh, maybe you need some sort of a delay. I guess there's already a delay. How would you do that? Yeah, that'd be complicated. Yeah, yeah, one of the things that, that you might think about is keeping the guy on uh, his end or whatever you'd say, keeping the system safe, um, giving other people out in the world too much control on your system might not be great. Um so, so having, let's say, a predefined setup of commands, um, you could put um, shout or diesel or any kinds of other words, whatever you want to think up and have that interact with something locked down to your system. So they're not actually per se sending you any type of malware or links to pornographic graphic images or whatever it might be stuff you tr truly don't want to be on your stream having the predefined um, commands there is probably for the best yeah and uh I, I get your point of having it's almost like a hot string or a hot key that they can hit or they'll type it out and then our code sees it and does a predefined thing Right, whatever that that might be, 
Um, and I mean, and I know that I'm sure there's stuff that you can do voting already, right? Like you can have a poll come up and do stuff, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's a similar thing or get, making it interactive and fun. The other thing, though, I think with the pictures, it'd be fun. But as long as you have more than one monitor, you could have a build-in. If, now, this is where it gets fun, right, is if you have an auto hotkey program um, on yourself and you give it them, <clears throat> you could have it dump it like to a MySQL database or Firebase, you know, with Google or what, or even like Google Sheets or something too, right? Keep it really simple. But um, you could automate you know, viewing it on the side on a different screen and uh, kind of approve it to make sure, you know, that, that nothing crazy gets displayed on the screen, right, on, on your main screen that you're sharing. Yeah, yeah, you you could, of course, make it into a semi-manual thing where you'd have people email you the image they want to be able to display on your screen and then allow them to have a custom command to pull up their image might also be a thing oh interesting okay yeah yeah i get you somehow you name the file and when you email it and then at some point in time later you use that same name and when you type it and it and it'll go get it is that what you're yeah. saying yeah, yeah. or what i'm like that. Exactly. Okay. so so a, a specific return to the stream it you might not be able to do it in the live stream per se if you want to approve and, and set it up, but within reason, depending on how much automation you want to set up. But again, the general idea of having your own image of your own pet sent to the host right. on any given email address, they then approve it and add it to the gallery uh, with whatever type of your username with an exclamation mark or whichever word command or text command uh, you'd opt for. You might either choose it yourself or the host will choose it or automatic, who knows. Yeah, so I think... Um... It, it is an interesting overall idea. Now, well, and actually, Jackie, so <clears throat> let's talk more about, let's stick with the, you create an auto hotkey script that you're going to obviously, I assume, maybe with our audience, we could we could do this with an auto hotkey script, right? For the vast majority of those, we, we, you have to compile it, right? Um, and with auto, if you're doing an auto hotkey, now you're just down to Windows, which is still you know, a lot of people. Um, so you give it to them and you distribute it out like, I I, th I think, what do you think about this? The fact that people are watching you means to some degree they probably trust you and the, they are fairly likely to actually use the script, the, the program you wrote. You think that's fair If it's say? small and lightweight enough and you push it during your live stream, you would probably give, be able to get some amount of downloads per stream and sometimes people will already have it so if you mention it they might pull it up and reuse it stuff like that sure it, it's it's possible uh, again it, it depends on the benefit you want to give the end user if you actually give them a program that's able to communicate using multiple channels or or something like that sure giving them a, a full program might give the end user more control on what's happening on screen mm -hmm. yeah I, I know i've seen people that are streaming with o they use obs and then some other i forget what they are but some other programs within obs to see that chat that live chat it, it'll display it in obs and it displays it on the screen in like an html format where um, but it's done through OBS. But anyway, there are a lot of tools out there that stick with the chat side of things. And that's where I, I still think you're you're right. Like if you're going to just really deal with text, I'm not sure if it's really worth um, writing a script to be given people. Uh, that's when you would just write a script on your end to collect, automate the collecting of that, you know, monitoring the chat feed and maybe looking for keywords. And you tell people, you know, here's here are the keywords to type. Uh, and the response you'll get or, or whatever. But um, 
which would be yeah, a, you'll you'll oh, get oh. three minutes of a dog picture if you type this or like three minutes are probably a bit extensive but yeah yeah but I do like the idea, uh, and I also appreciate, you know, the, the asking of a question for, you know, from for ideas and how to do it and not asking me to actually do the code. But so if anyone watching this, if you guys have concepts, you're trying to decide your best approaches, um, you know, e- email email us. And if it's uh, something that we think we can add value to, we'll, we'll mention it in the podcast and talk it through. Yeah, we'd love to just bounce those around because if, if nothing else, we might just hit that one thing you didn't think about. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, Jackie. Good talking. Yeah, absolutely.